Thank you very much for using the least time to, to address the matter. It's Honorable Mark uh, Mwenje, MP for Mpakasi West in the House. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I want to support uh, this proposal and thank Honorable Mule and Gishimo for bringing it to the floor. I believe, Mr. Speaker, this is long overdue. Um, it's a first time this parliament will have a chance to amend the constitution since it was promulgated in 2010. Um, I believe this amendment should be immune from the judiciary and the executive and have that bipartisan approach that we've seen so far. Mr. Speaker, I believe, as was mentioned by some of our colleagues before, we do need to engage the Senate informally regarding these amendments so that we ensure we've got a smooth process and avoid any conflict of roles and conflict of laws that may come about. So I would encourage the drafters as they form a parliamentary caucus that they remember, a National Assembly caucus that they should consider uh, liaising with our colleagues in the Senate. Mr. Speaker, the CDF fund is the most visible in this country today. In the 290 constituencies that we have in this country, you'll be able to see what CDF has done since it first came in 2003 under President Kibaki. So we should make sure as a house that we protect this fund, which was a brainchild of that parliament that existed then, that president then who saw it fit to support uh, the creation of CDF. Mr. Speaker, one of the things I'd want to, cons to request as we discuss and we'll be making amendments to the act following the passage of this uh, amendment is that we must consider population as well. Um, we notice that for those of us who are new members, distribution was based on wards. And I would submit that some of us represent urban constituencies, that are, like mine in particular, where I have over 280,000 people. So population needs to be a factor. And the way wards were created under, in 2013 or 2010, was not very fair because you have some constituencies that have more wards and lesser people. So I think we need to, call, to, to factor that in. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, we have a new system that's coming in next year. We've got CBC, so we'll have junior secondary coming in. And before we know it, members of parliament who've been here in the past have been given bursaries to secondary schools, uh, secondary going students of form one to form four, that's over four years. Next year, we'll add a fifth year. And the year after that, we add a sixth year. So we'll have more people coming to apply for bursaries. That is why it's more than important to ensure that we, this issue of having the act being challenged in court must come to an end. Mr. Speaker, the CDF, right now all members of parliament, and they've addressed them here. We are getting calls. We need uh, from our constituents, they need uh, bursaries. Some of us still have dilapidated schools. We are quite a number of overcrowded, especially right here in Nairobi. We have insufficient security apparatus here in some of our constituencies, and only CDF can remedy this issue. Mr. Speaker, as I finalize, on the drafting, I believe the, there's an error in drafting it as a Senate Oversight Fund. I think it's important we look at it as a Parliamentary Oversight Fund because if we call it Senate Oversight Fund, then it should be based on the revenue that's been allocated to the county. But the way it's been drafted, Parliamentary Oversight Fund, then you get a share from the national cake. We really need to consider this. I also believe the issue of the Economic Stimulus Fund should be separated from the other three funds. The other three funds should be conjoined so that they either pass together or we all perish. Finally, I believe the 5% will be the main issue. And as a house, I really pray that we will not get prom compromised by the executive and, pro and protect this 5%. With that, Mr. Speaker, I support the proposal. Thank you. 
Honorable MP for Buri constituency in Meru, the Honorable Indikiri Mugambi. I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker. First, let me congratulate you. You are my senior. I haven't had an opportunity of congratulating you. In actual fact, I think you should have been there last year. Mr. Speaker, I like to support the amendment of the Constitution in reference to National CDF Fund. Mr. Speaker, you know, Parliament has been given powers by the people of Kenya. Article number one of our Constitution. Uh, three, the Parliament has been given power by the people of Kenya to legislate on their behalf. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to confirm that uh, Gishimu and Mule are within the delegated powers by the people of Kenya. And I want to thank them for taking this issue to this height and we shall amend this constitution. Mr. Speaker, why is CDF very famous? It's not because of the money allocated to it, but first is because it is oversighted by members of parliament. Mr. Speaker, the members of parliament are proved that they are accountable. accountable. They are proved they are transparent. They are, accountable, they, are, they are proved that they exercise equitability, trying to distribute resources properly. That's why you find that CDF is in every part of our constituencies. Mr. Speaker, there is no conflict between the devolved uh, functions and between the government and the national government, between the county government and national government. It's very clear. National CDF 2015 is operating within the national government functions. As such, you are lawyer, Mr. Speaker, I don't know on what basis that the case was taken to court because we are operating under the national government functions. Mr. Speaker, this CDF is in support for our youth. Mr. Speaker, CDF has created job opportunities for our young people, contractors, artisans, name them. Mr. Speaker, the issue of Basali. Mr. Speaker, when there is an emergency. Mr. Speaker, whenever there is a public outcry, like now that we are having issues with the drought. Mr. Speaker, the environment and the school infrastructure. I'm a very proud member of parliament. I think I made it back to the second term because I oversaw the CDA for the last five years that every school in my constituency has been touched by a project one or two. I have done a lot of police stations, four in number, and we have put up 13 new laboratories in our constituencies, in our uh, day schools, we have spent a lot of money on CDF as basalists. We have spent money on sports. We have spent money on the environment. Mr. Speaker, the reason why CDF was brought in is because the national government was not able to see some gaps that were existing at the constituency level. Mr. Speaker, these are the gaps the members of parliament are quick to notice and they use CDF to close that gap. Mr. Speaker, I support and agree that we need to work out on the process of enacting this bill. It is very critical from what member of Madari said, and I agree with uh, Senior Kajuang what he said. There are certain things that we need to work on the process, but the concept, we are all in agreement. I support Mr. Speaker. The MP for Magarini and Rebo Hari Kombe.
Asante mheshimiwa speaker kwa kupata kuniona na pia vile vile niseme pongezi kwa mheshimiwa Mule na mheshimiwa Kichumu kwa kuweza kuleta mswada huu ambao unaitisha marekebisho ya katiba ili kwamba tukaweze kuiweka hazina ya maendeleo ya maeneo bunge hapa nchini katika katiba Mheshimiwa speaker isingekuwa ni hazina hii Mheshimiwa speaker sijui magari ningekuwa wapi 